Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Next lesson, not this lesson, we're going to go over a case statement. And what a case statement is, is it looks at one variable. And depending on the value in that variable, it will execute different blocks of code. Now, that's a multiple type of switch statement. Think of it as you're driving down the road and you come to a fork and there's like four or five different roads that you can take, but you have to take one of them. That's what the case statement is. Now an if, else, if, else construct can be very similar to a case statement if you're operating on one, if you're testing for on one variable throughout all the different test conditions. So I want to review that. And then in the next lesson, we'll go over the case statement, and you'll see that the logic behind them is just about exactly the same. Actually, it should actually be just the same. So here we go. If you want to test one variable for several conditions, you can use an if, else, if, else construct. And just to review, this is what it would look like. Obviously, these are commented out because this is just for comments. It's just for educational purposes. We're not actually running these tests here. So you would have an if statement. And if this test is true, then you execute then to the else if. So whatever is in between the two gets executed, which would be this. And then you go down to the phi and start execution of the program from then on in. You'd skip over everything else. However, if it was false, you would go to this else if. You'd run test two. If test true, test two is true, you would execute this block of code and then go down to after the phi. However, if it was false, you'd do this test right here within this else if, if it's true you would execute this command block right here. However, if none of the tests came out true, then you would go to this else statement and execute this block of code. So two things I want to point out here is that this else portion only gets executed if all of the previous tests come out false. And the other thing I want to point out is that the first test that gets validated as true that is the last test that gets executed. The corn shell will not go into the, any of the else if tests and test them out. It will only test out, excuse me, the first test that comes out true is the last test that gets executed and the code associated with it gets executed. Remember the first test that is true, the block of code gets executed after that, the program automatically breaks out of the if-else-if if structure and does not perform any more tests. So let's look at a real-world example. And what this is, is we've set up a corn shell script to help people do backups. And we're just going to prompt the user. We're going to let them know that we're going to do backups, and we want them to enter the type of backup they want done. A for daily, B for weekly, C for quarterly, and D for special. Let's take a look at what that looks like when you run it. Excuse me. After we print out our message here, we print out response and we read the response into a variable called response. Let's look at that. So this is what it would look like right here. And you notice that the corn shell program just sits there and waits for us to enter a response right here. Okay, let's go into the actual testing. So the users entered a response in and we're going to check to see if its value is uppercase or lowercase a. If it is, then we execute this block of code right here which just says print starting daily backup. It's good to let the user know what you're doing. That way they don't get freaked out when the program just sits there for a long time and doesn't show anything. And 
then we would execute our daily backup. However, this is all fictitious, so we're not executing anything. So that's why it's commented out. However, if the value in response was not an uppercase or lowercase a, then we go down to this else if structure here and we test to see if it was B. If it was B, we do a print starting weekly backup and then we'd execute our weekly backup. And after that, of course, we go down to the phi section and break out of the if then phi structure. However, if it's false, we check to see if the value was a C. If it was a C, we let the user know we're starting quarterly backup and then we'd execute our quarterly backup. However, if none of those were true, then we check to see if the response, the value within response, is an uppercase or lowercase d. If it is, then we say we're starting our, we're going to do our special backup, and our special backup in this case consists of a daily backup. So we do printing, print starting daily backup, and we do our daily backup. And when that's all done, what we do is we print a blank line, just put some white space in there and it's good. And then we tell the user, please take out daily tapes. And please put in weekly tapes. And then we say, please hit enter to continue and we read in a value and store it in waiting. So I want to show you what that looks like. The values of A, B, and C, the test conditions, are pretty straightforward. We really don't need to go over them. But the D condition is a little bit funky, so let's take a look at it when we actually run it. So we can enter a lowercase d, that's perfectly fine and it says starting the daily backup please take out the daily tapes please put in weekly tapes hit enter to continue and you notice it just waits there for you so this gives you a break it gives you the time to go take out the daily tapes put in your weekly tapes and corn shell will just wait there for you so this is kind of a neat tool whenever you want the user to go out and do something and when it's done they can continue on with the program. It gives them the opportunity, the time to do what they need to do. So the read statement can be thought of as I'm going to wait for you. Okay, it said starting weekly backup. Let's take a look at the code itself. Okay, so we have we printed a blank line, which we did in fact do. And then we went and we said starting weekly backup and then we ran the weekly backup and then that's the end of it so we go down to the phi and we continue execution of the program from then on in so we had told the user when we ran the program and let's rerun it again that they have the choices of a b c or d however if they didn't enter a b c or d which is what we tested for they entered an invalid option. So we want to let the user know, hey, you entered an invalid option. And that's where the L portion comes in. So if none of the tests came out true, in other words, they didn't enter a valid value, then person entered a bad, entered in bad data, tell them to enter a right choice. And right here is just a print statement. It says response is not a valid choice and one thing I want to point out here is normally when you have single quotes that takes away the ability of the dollar sign to do dollar sign substitution on variables so if you said print single quote dollar sign response single quote all by itself that would actually just print dollar sign response on your command line However, because the single quotes are inside of double quotes, that actually takes away their special ability to remove the meaning of the dollar sign, which is variable substitution. 
So in this case, the only thing that happens is we print a single quote, we print actually what the user entered, and then we print another single quote, and then we say is not a valid choice. So let's enter an invalid choice, 5, and as you can see, 5 is not a valid choice. So it's perfectly okay to have a dollar sign response inside of single quotes as long as those single quotes are inside of double quotes. Next time we're going to go over a case statement.